In our rotation lab, we looked at the effectiveness of a force at causing the rotation of an object about some point or some pivot point. Our lab setup looked like this from the top. We had just a solid electrical metal conduit pipe attached in the, exactly in the middle at some pivot point so it could freely rotate about this point. And we wanted to find out how effective given forces were at different distances. And so groups chose a, some distance, we'll call that distance 2 away from our pivot point or point of rotation, and applied different size forces as measured by using a spring skill to try to cause this thing to rotate in the clockwise direction. And we had a force sensor attached all groups exactly at one meter away, let's call that distance 1 from the point of rotation, which measured the size of the force needed at one meter to effectively cause it to rotationally stand still and not spin. So if they pulled with five newtons, let's say, at a half a meter, how much force would be required applied at a meter from that point of rotation to prevent this thing from rotating? So that those forces at those distances had the same effectiveness to try to cause rotation, or in this case, prevent rotation. So our purpose statement was, to determine the relationship between the force used to rotate a metal rod, that's F2, and the force which rotationally balances it at exactly one meter from our pivot point. Here's a sample whiteboard uh, from one group. They chose D2, the location or the distance from the pivot point where they applied their different forces to be one meter away, so it was the same distance away from the point of rotation as force one they found a, real, a proportional relationship and this was their equation they got that force one was basically about equal to force two at the same distance their slope was 1.05 with units of newtons divided by newtons <clears throat> so force one was about the same as force two another group chose to apply their independent variable force or force two at a half a meter away so half the distance away from the point of rotation. And when they changed the size of force 2 and they measured its effective change on force 1, our dependent variable, they found that force 1 each time was about equal to 0.48 or about 0.5 times whatever their applied force was. So when they applied a force of let's say 5 newtons at a half a meter, it took about 2.5 newtons at a meter in order to rotationally balance it. So let's look at this data and see if we can generalize the results. So we get force 1, which is the force at a meter, is equal to 0.48 times force 2. Remember the units were newtons per newton, but a newton divided by a newton simplifies to 1 over 1, or it's essentially this value is unitless. So that slope times the applied force, or F2, plus the y-intercept. In our discussion, we reason that the y-intercept must be insignificant or zero. Well, what was the evidence that we talked about? Well, we said, as you apply less and less force with the spring skill at that second distance, you would expect that force one would not need to be quite so big at one meter in order to rotationally balance it. And as the force you apply approaches zero, we would expect that the force needed to keep it from rotating would also approach zero simultaneously. Then we looked at our slope values. We all had different slope values, um, and we all noticed that they were unitless. So the first thing that we talked about was the fact that uh, a unitless number in the past was a ratio. So that slope, that constant slope, must be some ratio that was that stayed constant throughout our lab. Well, what's the evidence? Well, it didn't have a unit. The value was unitless, so it must be some ratio. Well, several students noticed that their value is really close to the ratio of distance 2 divided by distance 1. In this case, this group's second distance where they applied their independent variable force, or F2, was a half a meter away from the point of rotation, and F1 was for everybody was one meter away from the rotation. So the ratio of their D2 to D1, D1 was 0.5 meters divided by one meter was 0.5. So the ratio of their distances where the forces were applied from the point of rotation was about a half. 
and their slope is about a half. So we can now replace this value, this unitless value, with the ratio uh, which it represents, which is the d2 divided by d1. So our general equation becomes uh, f1 is equal to the ratio of d2 over d1 all times the value of f2. Well, let's multiply each of these sides by d1 so we can cancel out d1 on the right side and d1 goes on the left side so we kind of group uh, the distance that force 1 is applied and force 1 and the distance at which force 2 is applied uh, and force 2 and we see that when we kind of simplify it and we group these terms together we see that the product of the force 1 times its distance away from the point of rotation and the product of distance 2 and the force are the same thing the products are the same well in physics uh, we use the word torque to refer to the product of a force that tends to cause rotation applied at some distance away from a potential point of rotation we use a Greek symbol called tau uh, as the variable to represent torque and so it's torque is the product of a force applied perpendicularly to an object at some distance from a point of rotation uh, its units since it's a distance times a force or a force times a distance is a newton meter uh, in the standard international units uh, another unit of torque which you might be familiar with is foot pounds now uh, one thing that we talked about in the lab which uh, I haven't talked about in the video yet is the fact that we were very careful to apply our force uh, perpendicular to the rod the thing that could potentially rotate in a minute we'll look at well what happens if the force isn't perpendicular another way to think about torque is just to think about it's the rotational equivalent of a force what causes something to change its velocity well a force does well what causes something to either start spinning or stop spinning a torque does uh, and it measures the effectiveness of a force at some distance away from a potential point of rotation on your AP equation sheet you will not see torque is equal to D times F you'll actually see torque is equal to a R which stands for a distance from some point of rotation times F and this symbol right here just means perpendicular so if you apply let's say a 10 Newton force at a distance of one meter away from a point of rotation uh, and that force is perpendicular you can just multiply ten, 1 meter times 10 newtons so it have a torque a rotational equivalent uh, effectiveness of 10 newton meters well we need to take this one step fur further to give you guys the full torque equation to deal with any scenario where a, a force could cause rotation so let's look at a situation where uh, we let's say we uh, pulled our spring skills exactly or as close as we could to perpendicular to the direction of the rod or the direction of the radial distance that R distance let's say that we pulled at some angle uh, some angle measured from the radial direction so the radial direction is kinda of pointing down into the right and let's say we're pulling off in this direction at some angle theta well we know that if we were pulling perpendicularly we could calculate the torque by the radial distance whatever was chosen times the actual size of the force well if we break up this force into its components its perpendicular component to the rod and the parallel component to the rod uh, this size force has the same effectiveness essentially as this perpendicular component of the force so the only thing that matters really is the perpendicular component of a force if it's all in the perpendicular direction you can multiply that whole force times the radial distance if it's not already perpendicular you just need to find that perpendicular component well if this is theta right here we need to get an angle inside of our little right triangle we know that that is going to be a 90 degree angle because of alternate interior angles we can see we have a line kind of like bisecting, not bisecting, a line kind of intersecting two parallel lines here. This right here has to be theta as well. So if we want to find this side, that's really opposite the angle that we know, or theta, so we're going to have to use the sine. And it turns out that that perpendicular component would be equal to 
the force times the sine of whatever that angle is. So we can now write this final equation as the distance times f sine of theta, where f sine of theta just stands for the perpendicular component of a force. Well, if that force is actually perpendicular, then theta would actually be 90 degrees, and the sine of 90 degrees is just 1, so it would be 1 times the force times r, which basically just brings us right back to this equation. So now you guys know what torque is, and you should be able to calculate the value in units of newton meters for any given force given a radial distance, the size or magnitude of that force, and any given angle.